I'll call to order the August 8th regular business meeting of City Council. Mr. Hamp, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Yes, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll remind those in attendance tonight if you wish to speak during public comment or <coughs> citizens' comment or sign up sheets in the back of the room. Do any members of council have anything they wish to present before we get started? Mr. Marks. Well, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't extend birthday wishes to our city manager. Is that your birthday, Mr. Hamm? It is. Thank you, oh. Councilman Mark. <laughs> well, I would also uh, say we'd like to, Elzina's birthday is today. Oh. <laughs> Does that mean we have to sing now? Well, it seems like we ought to be singing. Wrong at first. <laughs> No, I don't think we need to sing. <laughs> must, must, be a, must be a very good day for the year. That's all I can say. It's, uh, anything else under a serious note? More serious. If not, the uh, first item of business is consideration of the consent agenda. Is our motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Mr. Short. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Item three is to hold a public hearing to receive comment and consider introducing an ordinance regarding a rezoning request by Basic Wits Heritage LLC owner to rezone a property from H1 Heavy Industrial to L1 Light Industrial at 215 Fifth Street, Waynesboro, Virginia, tax map number 36-2-2. Mr. Hamm. Mayor Allen, members of council, the first order of business uh, regarding this application is to receive the report and recommendation from the Planning Commission, which considered, uh, which conducted their public hearing and considered the application at their July 19th meeting and voted at that time six to zero to recommend approval in accordance with the staff report. Is there a motion to receive the report and recommendation of the Planning Commission? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Marks. Is there a second? <clears throat> second. Thank you, Mrs. Anderson. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. The report and recommendations are received, and now Mr. Barnes will give us a staff report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, good evening. Um, this application is for the, uh, at the corner of Fifth Street and Commerce over by Augusta Lumber. You can see a picture of it here. The owner is the Basic Wits Heritage LLC company. Uh, the owner is seeking to rezone the property from heavy industrial HI to light industrial LI. Uh, the property cons consists of a single story building about 10,000 square feet. Uh, it was used formerly as an office building, and the desired use is to use it for an office building with some limited storage uses in the building. Um, the reason it sort of necessitated to, to sort of change the, the zoning to support a still what is a, truly an office use now is that the subject property used to be a part of the Augusta Lumber Complex, and I believe was probably served as the offices for the complex at, at one time. Uh, it's pretty much set up as an office building internal to the building, but office uses aren't allowed in heavy industrial districts. Previously, it was sort of an auxiliary building to the larger complex. Um, by rezoning it to light industrial, it's actually sort of a down zoning, but it brings it in conformity with what the building is designed for, what its really intended purpose is. Staff really found very little um, issues with this particular rezoning. Um, it's consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, the proposed use is suitable for the site. There's limited to no environmental impacts. Only one I'd mention is that the building is in the floodplain, but relatively shallow in the floodplain. So I'm not even quite sure that the, uh, we, we didn't go and find a uh, elevation certificate for the building because the applicant is not proposing to, to do any renovations and therefore would not be required to make any improvements to flood proof the building. But it, regardless, it's safe to say that it's almost at the, out of the floodplain. 
There are public utilities, and actually this is sort of less impacts to the neighborhood by moving it from heavy industrial to light industrial, and thus sort of moving in the direction of being more compatible with the uh, residential uses that are across the street. Uh, staff on this particular one recommends approval of the zoning application without any conditions, and of course you've received your similar re recommendation from the Planning Commission. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Any questions of Mr. Barnes? Thank you, Mr. Barnes. I'll hereby open the public hearing. Um, Mayor Allen, we do not have anyone signed up to speak. However, it's our practice to allow the applicant um, to make comments if they're present and would like to do so. We, we are not the actual owners of the business. We were just representing, we're the ones looking to get inside the building um, to run the business, um, our personal business inside the building. Um, we are just office space. We, we run a transport uh, trucking business. So basically we're just on the phone, on the computer, and that's all we'd be doing there. All right, does anybody have any questions? If not, thank, thank you, Jonah. Thank you. All right, I'll hereby close the public hearing. <clears throat> Any other questions from council? If not, is there a motion to introduce? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. This and other ordinances introduced this evening will be considered at the August 22nd meeting of city council. Item four is to receive a report and recommendation from Mr. Dwayne Jones, Director of Parks and Rec, regarding recommended steps to establish a park at the closed landfill north uh, of North Winchester Avenue. Mr. Jones. Mayor and members of council, it's exciting to be with you here this evening and uh, present what's been an ongoing project for both uh, the city of um, Parks and Rec Department and as well as the Public Works Department. I'll give you just a brief overview of the project. This is a shot looking at the uh, landfill, I believe, just prior to the city taking ownership. This is uh, dated uh, 1979, and you can see the, um, uh, the scar, if you will, that it was known back then. Uh, when the city decided to go to a regional cooperative effort with Stanton and Augusta County, as you remember, uh, that we take our refuse there. At the time, city management, um, Parks and Rec, Public Works, and, and a lot of folks involved said, so, you know, this is kind of a neat site, uh, lots of views, um, and it'd be a shame just to let it be be a, uh, an empty landfill that's covered. So at that time, the city council actually made the decision to, uh, with a simple plan to design an access road and a flat plateau that would allow for future development uh, should further councils and, and the city decide that it would be uh, suitable for a park habitat. And so this is a look, a recent shot, this is looking slightly to the north and you can see the, the capped area that's in this front section and of course the road was designed to allow for traffic to come and go. Uh, this is an area looking to the south, and I think most of you have been up there, and it is quite a spectacular view of the city. Uh, Public Works, uh, several years later, sort of picked up on the project. They manage it because it, was, uh, uh, it is the refuse center, or it was the refuse center. They still operate out of there today. Um, and so they began holding Public Works Day up at the site. And so the public interest was very strong at those events. Folks uh, saw the view. They got a, ch a chance to glimpse and see what was available and sort of uh, continued that process of transferring it from uh, active landfill or a cap landfill potentially to a park setting. Um, we obtained some funding from the Department of Forestry back in 2013 and in 14 we worked with the uh, Virginia Tech Community Design Assistance Center to develop a basically conceptual plan to move it from an idea to talk about uh, different ways to implement and what kind of things that we think as a city and we had some public input on that of what the park should look like. And that park, that master plan really had three areas of focus. One was an improved entrance area. Uh, it is still uh, an, again an active storage area for the city refuse vehicles. Uh, the second part of that was the top area, how to develop a parking uh, area and, and connection to the trails, and then finally the linkages from the trails, which are both hiking and biking trails. And this is one example of, um, just to orient you, this is sort of the Baylor building and this is the entrance, and just some of the ways that we could deal with sort of improving that entrance to the public. Uh, the second part dealt with uh, 
the top area here, and this actually was a, this area is very flattened off, and uh, the students had come up with some different ideas, very low maintenance ideas. Uh, one of those was sort of a vista that would take you out. There would be an informational kiosk that you could look out and say, you know, how far is it to Stanton, and, and what is this industry down here? So, so an educational purpose as well. They also came up with the idea, which we thought was a good one, was sort of wildflower meadows. They're very low maintenance, but uh, potentially colorful from down on Main Street. Uh, and if you've been up there, it is a very windy site and obviously a great place to, to fly a kite. Very passive, again, is from a recreation standpoint. Uh, the other connection was the connection to the trails. And uh, all of you are familiar, I'm sure, with the Crozet Tunnel. Um, but you may not be familiar with the property. It goes all the way down. This is the uh, Virginia Power right-of-way. Uh, this is um, uh, Jones Hollow. And then all the way up here is the entrance to the Crozet Tunnel. And you can see there... Uh, the property actually extends very close to that. Now, I will tell you it is a challenge. It, it parallels the active rail line, but we think ultimately there could be some connections and trails to the Crozet Tunnel, which uh, this council and others have supported over the years. Uh, this is just a sample of what some of it may look like. Uh, we do think it's important to have informational signage, kiosks, and things like this so folks would know where they are on the trails, uh, how long the trails are, and the difficulty of the trails. Uh, we have been working with a local nonprofit called the River City Outdoor Recreation Association. They are a group uh, made up of uh, various citizens here locally, and they've uh, been active in trying to develop a mountain bike park or mountain bike trails in that area. They've actually had a couple of uh, work days, and there are some trails that they're beginning to develop. And those trails, uh, they've worked with some various folks, and those trails, whoops, those trails are these various trails, and the different color uh, relate to the various abilities. One of the things that we had um, uh, talked with them early on was that we would like it for it to be available for the average kid and all the way up to sort of an expert level. And so we think we've, uh, with their help, have designed some trails in there that would um, meet those purposes. Uh, most of the bike trails, again, this is what's called a single track uh, mountain bike trail. I'm just a sample of what it would look like. We also think there would be shared use trails, not only for walking and biking, so that those two, those obviously would be wider uh, sections of the park that we would use. And all of the sections of the trails uh, are on the uncapped portion of the landfill. I just want to let you know that in, nothing takes place on the capped area, which there's uh, restrictions from EPA and what can take place in the cap. Uh, but really, two thirds of the park is there is no trash. There's monitoring wells and things like that, but there is no cap in that section. So the limitations, uh, we do have some. Um, um, flexibility with different things we do on that section of the park. So the plan that uh, the folks at uh, Virginia Tech come up with a different uh, phasing plan of, of ways to build that and focus on different parts um, from the direction of council, we refine that first phase recommendations. And basically what it comes down to is what we've uh, dubbed a safe public access. Uh, obviously with a, a capped landfill, uh, it is not open to the public, was not closed and designed uh, in a way that allows for public. You certainly can get service road and service vehicles, over, but there are various safety concerns that we are concerned about. And so the engineering services we completed in two phases. Uh, the first phase is a preliminary and schematic design. And uh, basically, it's a review of the existing information and mapping. Uh, we'd meet with relevant staff, both refuse, public works, parks and rec. Um, evaluation of the security and signage issues. Obviously, there's, no, there's some fencing on the core, but a lot of the property areas are not fenced. Uh, also, the gas probe and monitoring well protection. And when I mean protection, the, the, certainly the park is safe to be in. There's no uh, gas emitted that is uh, harmful. We're talking about protecting the gas from the public. We need to protect those sensitive equipment from the public that may not know what it is or may stumble upon. It, um, and so we want to protect those sensitive equipment from the public. There's also a cell tower up there, and there's some uh, um, potential impacts there. Our plan has sort of uh, avoided that area, but that needs to have a little bit closer look. Also, some different ac access road options, entrance options and schematics, initial construction phase recommendation, and an estimated construction cost. Mm -hmm. The second phase of that would build on what came out of the first phase would be a field survey, uh, design a final design of the entrance and what it would look like. Again, currently now we would coexist. If it were to open, we would coexist with the refuse operation. Uh, but there's, there's ways, I think, and I think with uh, some proper design that can make those two um, activities marry together very well. There's also different design access roads to the parking area, initial uh, parking area. Again, following up on the sign and security and different things we'd need uh, to have it open. 
Also protection, again, uh, designs and how we'd actually protect the probes and the monitoring wells. Uh, finally, an ENS and stormwater plan. Uh, and it went in with developing specification, contract documents, and also bidding and bid evaluation phase. So this actually next phase would get us to uh, an actual uh, set of plans that we could send out to bid. We'd have uh, some preliminary cost estimates, and so that would take us to that next level uh, to take it um, again into the next phase. So, and I will just open it up for questions, if anything specific. One question, I saw your, uh, the plans. Approximately how far is it from Sunset Park to the tunnel entrance? It, it really depends on the access um, of where you cross, either under, over, or around the tracks. We are dealing with that now with the Crozet Tunnel Project. Um, at its closest point, it's, it's literally um, probably less than a half a mile. Um, so it is very close. Now, whether that crossing is appropriate uh, because you still have to cross 250 which we uh, there are obviously better places to do that the traffic coming down the mountain is uh, um, kind of fast and so there may be areas to move that closer to Waynesboro to have a better crossing so we haven't really gotten to that point yet but by the way the crow flies if you were to walk to the very end of the property and get there it's probably less than a half a mile to the entrance to the tunnel in all reality, we would probably have to follow the railroad tracks up going east till we could get to the east side of the underpass, correct? Correct. We could do that or, again, potentially cross under somewhere that's appropriate and then have some type of um, a pedestrian cross then on 250. And, again, that's difficult as you get closer up the mountain, but it's easier as you come as traffic slows and it flattens and your sight angles change as you come into Waynesboro. So there's a lot of options there, uh, but um, I think it's doable. It certainly is a long-term reach. Crozet Tunnel is just getting started with their next phase, which is inside the tunnel and then the western connector. So uh, there's still some time before that's open and walkable. So, But I think we have some time to... Uh, work out those details of how to make that connection. And if you don't make the connection, I still think there's ways to not only, uh, if you're coming to mountain bike or just bike in the area, oh, by the way, here's the Crozet Tunnel, you enter and there's a brochure to come to Sunset Park at the end of it, so. Over on the east side of the, <clears throat> the property of the our closed dump, how close would some of our trails come to uh, current uh, residential housing. We've actually designed the trails to be well off of that property line. Um, uh, and again, most of those are single track mountain bike trails. Obviously, there are um, signs uh, to mark when you're passing on to private property and there are signs passing on to our property for folks that pass on there. I think we can improve on that, uh, have some better signage, some better areas that we can pick up so that the public knows when they've left park property onto private property. But um, we've been cognizant of that and most of those mountain bike trails are, I think, at a good safe distance from the few surrounding houses. Thank you. Is there any other questions? Well, Maybe. I'll go ahead. Go ahead. I, you know, I've been up there on several occasions, and as you pointed out, it's a unique site, uh, and I think it would behoove the city, as we see the feasibility, to pursue this as quickly as they can because it's something we can hold out for tourism and economic development and everything else. So uh, I hope we can uh, find a way to, to move move ahead and get this done. Actually, that was a good segue to my question. <laughs> Next question. Uh, in an ideal, or in your time frame, things sometimes don't work out like we'd like it to. What kind of time frame we're looking at? Uh, the preliminary phase is probably the engineering, just talking strictly engineering, the first phase is probably two months, 60 days or so. The second phase and following up there is probably 90 days. So. Uh, you're probably looking at start to finish six months or so to have a um, as built or drawings and, and potentially going out to bid. And obviously, um, part of that first process would be developing cost so that the city, we could come back to council and say, 
this is what this costs, this is what a limited parking area costs, this is what the entrance changes cost. So we would have a really good idea of where it goes forward. Now, I will say from a, from a park planning standpoint, uh, they're not playgrounds, there's not sports fields, there's no irrigation. Uh, it is a very passive uh, park, much like you would come and pick up a trailhead on the Appalachian Trail. Um, so in those terms, once it's completed, I think the costs are very uh, relatively low with respect to the use. Uh, obviously making it safe and guardrails and, and um, preparing gas monitoring wells, those costs are, are, are probably gonna drive it up slightly. But again, once those are safe and the area is open, I think the next phase as far as developing trails is, is relatively inexpensive compared to building soccer fields or pavilions and things like that. Any other questions, Mr. Jones? Comments about moving forward from each council member? Mr. Freeman? Uh, I'm, I'm excited about the possibilities and it is a great view and we, uh, here we move as we move. Be great. Ms. Anderson? I'm excited, I'm looking forward to seeing it happen. Thank you, Mr. Short. I, I, I just say, you know, I, I was I was one of those first families that uh, um, that attended the, the public works day up on on top of Sunset Park. And, you know, you're moving 800 miles away from the only place you've ever known. And you go up on top and you wonder if you made the right decision. And that view, <laughs> you know, you made the right decision. It's absolutely beautiful. It's stunning. Um, I think, uh, you know, building a great city requires building great places. And this could be a great place for the city. Um, and I think an important um, recreational and cultural asset for the east side of our city, um, and certainly something that every resident um, and, and tourist could enjoy um, at a very nominal investment, uh, when I think you've, you've kind of spoken to that. So I, I, I certainly support exploring uh, what those soft costs uh, um, may be to, to, to open it up, and, and would certainly support uh, that uh, recommended appropriation that staff has, uh, has provided. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. I'd say move forward, Mr. Jones. Thank Excellent. you, sir. Thank you. Item five is to consider approving an application from the Parks and Recs Department <coughs> to serve alcohol beverages on city property in accordance with all relevant alcohol beverage control regulations on Saturday, September the 3rd, 2016 at the War Memorial Park as part of the Tour de Valley cycling event. Mr. Hamm. Gentlemen and uh, Ms. Anderson, this is um, the Tour de Valley, what historically was known as the Century Ride, and uh, for years it was organized and conducted by a local cycling club. Several years ago, the club was experiencing some membership and um, um, not membership issues, but had identified and determined that they could no longer um, coordinate the event themselves. So they approached um, our Department of Recreation, which has a terrific uh, reputation for um, event coordination and um, at the time um, running event coordination in particular, and asked if the city would be interested in assuming responsibility to conduct the event. Um, we've had two successful um, events um, since that conversation occurred. The event concludes with a social activity that um, the members like to um, enjoy alcohol beverage. And um, in order to serve alcoholic beverages on city property, the council has to give the authority to do so. And that is the primary reason why this application comes for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Hamps. Any questions from council? Is there a motion to approve the application? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Freeman. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It carries 5-0. Item 6A is to consider introducing an ordinance appropriating a portion of the governmental technical reserves in the amount of $8,500 to the general fund to provide funding for additional costs to maintain the necessary internet service for the city government. Mr. Hamm. Um, in May of this year, as we were concluding work on the budget, our staff learned that uh, we were enjoying a service level of internet service provision for which we were not paying. And in conversation um, with Lumos, our service provider, um, the staff have identified that um, what we what the organization requires 
is a level of service that exceeds what we've budgeted um, for the current fiscal year. And uh, when I say city internet service, this is the internet service that um, our municipal departments and facilities rely on to perform their work. Everything from very limited and routine uh, work, um, such as I might perform on the internet, basic research, to more complicated um, and um, critical functions for which the public safety, police, fire, EMS, um, dispatch rely. Um, Mr. Gary Choate and Mr. Gary Kreitzer have um, confirmed that we need a higher level of service and this appropriation ordinance makes up the difference in what we have budgeted this year and what that service requires in terms of cost. And those gentlemen will examine further um, during the course of this fiscal year and identify subsequent recommendations that may be necessary to ensure that we have adequate service level and reliability um, for municipal operations. Thank you, Mr. Hamp. Any questions from council? Is there a motion to introduce? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Marks. <coughs> Item 6B is to consider introducing an ordinance appropriating a portion of the school maintenance reserve in the amount of $58,295 <coughs> for transfer to the school fund to be used for the installation of track structural spray and lining for resurfacing the school track. Mr. Hamp. <coughs> this ordinance refers to um, the track that is on the soccer field complex. This is the newer of the two tracks and the one that um, is used for scholastic competition and um, for use by the general public walking and running, etc. cetera. Um, the track was installed around 2007 and has about an expected life of um, 10 or so years. Dr. Castle and the city staff, um, excuse me, Dr. Castle and the school staff have confirmed that um, the track really needs to be resurfaced at this point and failure to do so um, may require um, subsequently um, work that is more of repair in nature and less of maintenance, um, less of a maintenance nature, and with that, some additional expense. So this is a maintenance of the current track, and again, the ordinance that's presented for your consideration takes the funding for the project um, from that school facility reserve. Thank you, Mr. Hamp. Any questions from council members? Say the life is about 10 years? Yes, sir. And how long has it been? about 10 years. I think it was installed in 2006 or 2007, so we're either at nine or 10 years. It's a great track. That's what I've heard. <laughs> Sounded good, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. Just about when the warranty runs out. Is there a motion to introduce the ordinance? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Item 7A is to consider reappointing two members to the Historical Commission each for a four-year term ending August the 31st, 2020. Mr. Hamm. Um, Dr. Amy Tillerson Brown and Ms. Andrea Jackson presently serve on the Historical Commission, are eligible for reappointment and wish to be reappointed. Is there a motion to reappoint Dr. Amy Tillerson Brown and Mrs. Andrea Jackson to the Historical Commission, each for a four-year term ending August the 31st, 2020? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Mr. Short. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Item 7B is to consider reappointing two members to the Parks and Rec Commission for four-year terms ending August the 31st, 2020. Mr. Hamp. Mr. Robert Kirkendall and Ms. Donna Ownby are both eligible for reappointment. Is there a motion to reappoint Mr. Robert Kirkendall and Mrs. Donna Owenby to the Parks and Rec Commission for four-year terms ending August the 31st, 2020? So moved. Mr. Freeman, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Marks. Uh, any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Item 7C is to consider appointing a council member to the Planning Commission for a two-year term ending August the 31st, 2018. Mr. Hamp. Ms. Elzina Anderson's name is presented for council's consideration. Is there a motion to appoint Mrs. Anderson to the Planning Commission for two-year term ending June the 30th, 2018? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Short. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. All in favor, say aye. 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 
Opposed? Carries 5-0. Item 7D is to consider appointing a member of City Council to the Capsaw Board of Directors for a two-year term ending June the 30th, 2018. Mr. Hamp. Ms. Elzina Anderson again. All right. Is there a motion to appoint Mrs. Anderson to the Capsaw Board for a term ending June the 30th, 2018? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Marks. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Short. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Communications, correspondence, and calendar. I have one very brief positive item. Earlier this summer, um, the employees, municipal employees, primarily in this building, participated in a food drive coordinated by the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank and collected 82 pounds of food, uh, for which we're told, um, or from which we're told, 98 meals can be provided to needy individuals in our community. And I thought that was an effort worthy of mention. That's Wonderful. good information. Anything else? No, sir. Citizens comment period. Mr. Bill Kirkendall. Mr. Kirkendall, you give us your name and address, please, sir. Absolutely. William Kirkendall, 109 Holland Circle, Waynesboro, Virginia. Thank you, sir. Um, I have, I've listened to you talk about the Crozet Tunnel. I've listened to, to you talk about the landfill. And all that's all well and good. I haven't heard one thing other than the fact that you're going to resurface the track or had there's money to resurface the track at probably the only soccer field that's regulation size in the whole Shenandoah Valley. And I'm really happy for that. Uh, I think it needs it. I know other people have rented that facility in order to use it, so it does bring some money into the school district, I believe. My request is this. I haven't heard one thing mentioned about the progress of moving on to a new high school, whether it be renovated, whether it be built. I don't want to see this issue get buried somewhere. I don't want to see it take second spot to whatever else happens in the city. I think it needs to be out in front of the public, and I think it needs to be in front of city council. My request is that somewhere in your agenda that you have an opportunity to make a comment as to progress, not specifics, but just progress, where we are, you know, maybe even how many times you've met, if there's any movement one way or the other, uh, maybe the possibility of having a public meeting to talk about that. Uh, as I said, I just don't want to see it get buried. And I, I don't think you want to see it get buried either. And this request, I'll not only make to you, but I'll make it to the school board when I go there. Because I think both of you have made an effort to really start to work together on this. And I think it's important that it stays out in front so that the community knows what's going on in details that you can, you can give. I'm not, I'm not talking about specifics. You understand that, I understand that. But I think it needs to be, I, need it, I think it needs to be part of your agenda to make it a point to at least mention whenever you can the progress that's being made. And uh, I, I just think we need to, to move forward as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible to get us a new high school. I know the other day when it rained so hard, the, the parking lot was flooded. Water was coming back up through the drain rather than going down. Um, and I, I understand that's part of the storm water and you know the situation that we have with that. I know there are leaks in the building. I don't want it to become unsafe for kids. I want it to be a project that moves efficiently forward and uh, comes to a, a, a really a good conclusion for this city because I think when you talk about your industrial park and putting people in there, it's important that we have a, that we have a good high school to look at, that we have good elementary schools, uh, the whole nine yards. Kate Collins is probably the showcase of the cities, you know, as far as that's concerned and, and maybe one of your elementary schools. We need more than that and we need it as soon as possible. So I thank you for your, for your ability to start to work on that. I just think we need to keep it out in front of the public in order to make it happen. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. And uh, I'm gonna break one of my own rules. I usually do not um, 
encourage comments when we get into public uh, comment at the mic. But uh, we probably would have had another report for you tonight. We had a meeting scheduled for last week, but uh, because of a, a conflict in the calendar and everybody meeting, we had to change it to this coming uh, Wednesday. So we'll have a meeting. At our last meeting, which I thought you was here, uh, Vice Mayor Short give a, a little update about what we had done at, uh, at the first meeting that we've had, and we haven't had a meeting since. But uh, we plan to continue to give updates uh, to keep everybody uh, exposed to what's happening and uh, what process we're going through and the time schedule we're doing it. And uh, I think we're gonna get it done right this time. And so we're definitely working on it. So with that, I'll shut my mouth. Yeah. I, I would just add that, that there's not a day that goes by that, that one of us aren't talking about it or thinking about it. So it's, it, it's absolutely a priority and we get that. And, and we're having, we're having uh, a lot of conversation amongst not just this group here, but between staff and between uh, school board members also. So we're on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else? Anybody else? Yes, sir. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thanks.